What is up guys, Taiki here, and today I just wanted to give my holistic view on markets for Bitcoin and Ether and my thoughts on the Echo Bubble. Also, we've seen one of the largest airdrops uh, in the history of crypto uh, with Blur, right, airdropping um, tokens to on Valentine's Day. I got some tokens, right? I sold my Blur, but I'll talk about why I did that and uh, I guess the pros and cons of the Blur token. And I guess while we're on that topic, I'll also talk about you know why I think NFTs and DeFi just converging together is inevitable, and a lot of it, uh, airdrop farming opportunities for NFT finance projects, uh, and why I think you know I'm pretty positive that sector. So let's get right into it. None of this financial advice. Um, you know, if you like the content, please like and subscribe. Uh, link to the premium Discord is in the description below, and I hold these tokens as of February 27th today. So let's talk about that bubble. Um, people are saying. Uh, or, you know, in crypto, there's this concept of the four-year cycle, um, primarily due to the Bitcoin halving. And, you know, we saw like this crazy strength in crypto in the month of January, and people are comparing 2023 to 2019. Because in 2019, um, you know, if you were in the markets back then, markets went down only in, in, in 2018. And then in 2019, from January to basically early July, the market just literally went up only. Uh, and obviously, as a bull, you want to see this happen. Um, of course, I don't really respect or I don't really expect history to repeat, uh, but it does often rhyme. And crypto is a very reflexive asset class. So you know, if enough people believe that this is um, this has some potential, then I actually think that it can actually happen. Um, and there's a lot of uh, similar analogs between 2019 and 2023. So let's talk about that first. So I've covered this before, but you know. There was tether fud, right? There's, there's like always fud, and there's a saying: bull markets climb a wall of worry. Because if you basically if you basically transition from a bear market to a bull market, of course, at the bottom there's so much bad news, and even as the markets recover, there's going to continue to be bad news. And if we are entering a new bull market, then you know you want the markets to shrug off the bad news and you know have more buyers step in every time there is a dip. And for example, uh, on April twenty fifth. Uh, the New York prosecutors alleged that Bitfinex covered you know a billion dollars of like losses using tether funds, and this led to a fourteen to fifteen percent correction in the price of BTC. Just imagine like the market psychology back then. Bitcoin went from three k to six k. There's tether fud. And everyone's calling for the end of crypto, but you know markets climb a wall of worry. And like ten days later, like, Bitcoin was putting in new local highs, and it was literally up only you know, from that point uh, to late June ish. Um, and recently. There's been a lot, like a lot of like regulation fund. I think, I mean, I mean, we should all expect regulation fund, especially after what happened in 2022. There was Operation Choke Point, basically the government restricting uh, banking access for crypto startups. No rumors around that. Uh, there was also USDC fund, right? Like USDC potentially being a security, a BUSD Paxos, right? Um, or BUSD basically, you know, being sunset, uh, and also you no know, centralized exchange staking fund. Um, Kraken, right? I think got sued by the SEC and they're getting rid of their staking services and Coinbase, right? They're taking a stand and they're trying to protect, um, you know, one of their most profitable uh, business sectors, which is, you know, centralized exchange staking, uh, because I think they take like a 25% fee uh, for each staking, which is pretty insane. Uh, and when all of this news was, you know, in the grapevine, people heard about it, this led to a 12% correction in the price of BTC. And similar to 2019, it was immediately engulfed um, and we were putting in new local highs like 10 days later. Of course, you know, we're not experiencing like up only to similar to like, you know, 2019, uh, primarily due to like maybe the macro conditions, uh, regulation FUD, right, being more scary. Uh, but the analogies are there. Um, and, you know, can something like 2019 Echo Bubble repeat in 2023? And like I mentioned, you know, basically like you kind of want to see bad news, right? And this is like, you know, part of like the reasons I've been looking for FUD uh, because I mean, markets don't go down for no reason. Of course, people sell when there's uh, bad news or like a scary headline uh, or like for whatever reason. Uh, but typically, um, you know, ten percent correction like happen when you know there's like fud in the markets. But you know, for like for for me to have more confidence in the sustainability of I guess this short to medium term right, bull market that crypto might be seeing uh, is you know for. You know these bad news to be absorbed by buyers uh, because crypto has been literally up only this year right so i practically um you know i, I would expect buyers to come in um, every 10 to 15 percent dip uh the moment bitcoin loses right like loses that and like dumps 20 percent, i would be much, much more worried but practically speaking right like is this even fud like we knew that stable going fud was coming anyways of course usdc being a security uh would really hurt the markets but i don't really see like how like that makes any sense. Um, and I think the biggest 
FUD or that led to like the biggest you know price drop was the centralized exchange staking FUD. But in, in the grand scheme of things, like like does that even matter, right? It's like some some like random dude in Iowa, Idaho, right? Like they can't, they can't stake their ETH with Kraken, like like who cares, right? Like I mean, it's it's like primarily like I mean, it's it's obviously like more bullish things like Lido FXS, uh, and uh, I'll talk about those later, but. Um, I actually think you know it makes the case for uh, DeFi much better, right? I mean, even Coinbase, if they keep their staking product, they take a twenty five percent cut, uh, and I get the convenience aspect of it, right? It's like you know you you get your parents to buy ETH, you <laughs> stake it on Coinbase. Uh, it's much simpler than you know buying ETH, bridging it to MetaMask, and then like staking it with like Lido. Um, but you know, like, I mean, I think LSDs are going to continue to be a really strong narrative throughout this year, especially with the Shanghai update coming late March to early April. Um, so let's talk about the Echo Bubble. Um, and how I'm thinking about it is like, you know, if you think about the amount of selling that we've seen in 2022, uh, it was it was pretty incredible, right? Um, FTX, 3AC, I mean, everything went poorly, um, and you know, we saw some uh, we saw like a crescendo of panic uh, post FTX. And I think the way the markets have rebounded so far is pretty constructive, um, but I'm not really expecting like new all-time highs, like the beginning of the, the new bull market. Uh, from my perspective, um, of course, I mean there's always a possibility that this is the beginning of the bull market. Um, but like in, in my mind, this is how I think about it: either we're in the early stages of of a of like the next bull market, or we're in the middle to late innings of a bear market rally. Okay, so. If that's going to be the case, I think in either scenario, it makes sense for me to be long. Right? I mean, I've been long all year, um, so I'll talk about like hedging, hedging and taking profits later. Um, but that's kind of my view. Of course, if the data changes, I have to like adjust and whatnot. But uh, no, I'm still in let it ride mode, right? I mean, I see FUD. I'm like, okay, like I'm going to just like, you know, drink some beer and like, you know, just go to sleep, right? It's like, I don't really care. I expect FUD. Um, and so far, I've, um, I've liked the um, reaction to the market so far. And like I mentioned, crypto is very reflexive. Like imagine, right? Like uh, the month of February stays flat, month of March ends up green. Um, and if we, right, if we approach like 30K, people are gonna be saying, oh my God, like echo bubble, like 30K is like not gonna be resistance. Uh, and you might wonder like, okay, like how can 30K not be resistance, right? Because it's a round number. Um, you know, we saw some that, like buying here. This was basically when 3AC capitulated, right? Um, but also, right, if you, I mean, you can say anything to like fit your biases. But on a similar note, people were saying 6K is like this infinite sell wall uh, because you know we bounced through like so many times. Um, but in this echo bubble, right, we just like went straight through. Um, so you know, if the markets go higher, there's people are always going to be moving goalposts. Um, so I think the best thing to do right now is like, like uh, at least for me, I'm just like saying, okay, like if we see like the second leg, or if we see like another leg um, for Bitcoin in there, I have to really uh, seriously consider um, taking profits, right? Um, because I think we're like if we're doing the similar analogy to the echo bubble, I think we're like we're like both roughly here because this was also when uh, we saw tether FUD. But I don't really expect like you know six months of upwelling action. Uh, that just kind of seems unreasonable. Um, but you no, know, my thinking is if, if a bunch of people believe that we're going to see a six month echo bubble, then maybe it's best to just start selling in April. Um, maybe even starting March. Uh, or you know, I'm, I'm definitely like starting to consider like how how do I start taking profits in something. Uh, not because I'm bearish, like my old coins that I hold, or like just crypto in general, but you know, just just for risk management, I I, I like hold barely any cash right now, so you know, I just have to protect myself uh, for the downside. And one thing I've been looking at, uh, and I'm not even sure. I mean, you know, there's always like these like random narratives, uh, and some like you know, it's like really bad narratives that you should ignore. And I've been seeing this like China narrative where uh, you know, in 2021 in May, uh, the the, the first top in Bitcoin was basically catalyzed by, you know, China banning Bitcoin mining. Um, and now it seems like um, the East is taking a more favorable stance to crypto. Um, if you actually like read articles around um, the Hong Kong story, um, it's not really providing like full access to crypto for every retail participant. It's more for institutions. But maybe this has some merit because, you know, if you view uh, crypto as a barometer for, um, I guess, global liquidity, right? Maybe, you know, like as China injects more liquidity into the ecosystem uh, or into the economy and people have, I guess, more capital to, I guess, buy risk assets, then maybe they're going to, you know, buy more, like, you know, buy more risk assets. Uh, and, you know, uh, like Chinese stocks have been doing really well. Um, and this is just my subjective experience, but 
like let's say like a, a month or two ago it's like i i lurk all these discords but no there's, there's like barely any activity um, of course as price goes up there's like more activity um, but i've noticed in the past couple of weeks that like the chinese section of discords have gotten a lot more active um, i can't really read chinese i mean i'm japanese so i can kind of I, I can kind of understand what they're saying um but i just thought it was kind of interesting and um but always but also right like even if china is injecting liquidity uh you know the fed is going to continue to raise rates the market's growing um pricing in the fed going to five and a quarter to five and a half and just staying there uh, maybe some you know probability of like even 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 them going higher and of course um if the cost of capital is much higher if the risk-free rate is like roughly five percent then there's not really going to be that much demand to like bridge stable coins on chain because uh, if you go to Aave, right, like you get like paid two percent, it's like, like, like what, what, like why am I taking on that risk? Uh, of course, if you you know provide liquidity, you can earn like ten percent, twelve percent. But I would expect the majority of people to just you know if they want stablecoin yield, right? I mean, this is probably like the best stablecoin yield uh, on like risk adjusted return basis. Um, of course, this is like not great, but um, you know, like like from my perspective, if you think about it, it's like. If DeFi TVL um, has been relatively sticky throughout 2022, um, I mean, I mean, it's, it's not really sticky, right? I mean, people, like money definitely left the <laughs> left, left the ecosystem. Um, but that was also when rates were going from like zero to like four and a half percent, right? Uh, I mean, that delta is like pretty insane. But now, like going from four and a half to five, five and five and a quarter, five and a half. Uh, of course, that's you know, it's gonna um, restrict the amount of new capital coming in. But I would expect like whatever money is on chain, right? Like whatever money is in crypto right now is relatively sticky, okay? Um, <laughs> like my thing is like, yeah, like if people survive the 2022 bear market, like, you know, um, I feel like it's way too early to leave, right? I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's kind of my thinking. Uh, but like I said, yeah, like these stable coin yields are like, is, is the good stuff, They're definitely the good stuff. Um, and in terms of stable coin inflows, uh, I've been covering this uh, for like the past couple of months, ever since the FTX collapse, this looks bad. Um, but this is also because it contains BUSD. And as you can see, um, when FTX collapsed, it was like 23 billion, and now it's down over 50%. This is, I mean, this is because, um, you know, Paxos is, you know, getting rid of BUSD, um, you know, because the SEC went after them. So I don't think this is like the best barometer. So if you get rid of uh, BUSD, it looks more like this. And I mean, it's not great still, um, but you know, FTX day, right? USDC market cap, 42 billion, right? Like roughly the same uh, a couple days ago. Uh, this is every four days, right? So, you know, every, every four days, Tether, 69.51, now it's 71. Um, and as you can see recently, um, and if you go back to this, this post, I don't know if you can see the date, but this is like roughly February 15th. Uh, and I just like thought it was interesting that there was like some confluence in terms of, you know, Roughly around February 15th, 16th, uh, we've started to see like a crazy influx of uh, stablecoin capital. Um, of course, this might be due to BUSD, right? Um, people sell their BUSD into USDC or DAI or Tether or like, or like whatever. Um, but also like BUSD started going down. I mean, basically like post FTX and it seems like liquid, like, you know, stablecoin inflows are picking up. Um, and if you look at the total market cap of stablecoins on FTX day, it was like 112 and now it's like back to 113. So maybe we're putting in new local highs in the stablecoin market cap. Uh, of course, there's so much, so much noise here. Um, I'm not really saying this because I think this is like super bullish. Uh, but, you know, I think us Westerners, like we don't really know what's happening in Asia and China, right? It's like I get a bunch of information from Twitter, but you know, like Chinese people don't use Twitter, they, they use WeChat. So we don't really have good optics on what's happening over there. Uh, but like when you look at this data, it makes me think that, okay, like maybe, you know, China injecting <laughs> like liquidity into the economy is actually having an effect on uh, more people getting into crypto. Because um, I, I mean, like if you look at the metrics, most of my viewers are like American, um, but crypto is a global asset class. So I, I do think it's important to you know, just keep in touch with what's happening in the entire world. Cool. Uh, so quick summary of the first two months of 2023. It's been up only, right? Um, there's been some FUD recently, but I think uh, the monthly candle for Bitcoin and ETH is like basically flat. So uh, the fact that, you know, Bitcoin went up 40% in January and it's like flat in the month of February, I think it's constructive. I think it's just consolidating. Um, and, but like the risk is like a lot of the DGENs uh, like myself, I mean, maybe I'm not, I mean, you know, it's all subjective, but uh, I've had a wide margin of error. Uh, 
you know, if you just like bought something in January, then like chances are like you're up, right? It's, it's like very, very hard to not be up. Um, I still think that in this market environment, you know, you have to go for high conviction bets. Um, you know, whenever Bitcoin goes down 2%, altcoins get wrecked. Uh, so if you want to be allocated the risk in crypto, altcoins and whatnot, uh, you, you kind of have to try to outperform Bitcoin and Ether. Um, so, and like in, in order for you to do that, I just think you have to have like high conviction, right? You have to put in the work, put in the research so that, you know, if there is like a 20, 30% correction, which is inevitable for most altcoins, you're, you're gonna wanna be able to like hold on to that. Um, because if you don't have conviction, then you're just gonna like dump it, right? Because everyone's just like trying to flip these random altcoins. Uh, so yeah, I'm not really chasing pumps. Um, and ultimately like, my risk tolerance is very high. Um, it's not that I have a high risk appetite, but I just, I'm like just not as risk averse as the, like the average person. Um, I think maybe it's due to my poker background. I've like lost so much money before, uh, you know, it's just like uh, maybe not gambling, but you know, playing poker. Um, so, you know, if I think that the risk was worth it, then I would like, I don't really have trouble piling in and, you know, just, just like let everything ride, right? Um, so, you know, just because I'm doing that doesn't mean that you should. Um, I, I mean, I definitely think that the markets are way more risky than it was a couple weeks ago uh, or you know, even like two months ago. So, you know, I think there's reasons to be cautious. So let's talk about like hedging strategies. Uh, so, you know, before I, I guess before I get into that, um, my outlook March and beyond is I, th I mean, I, I think it's quite possible that the majority of gains uh, that we're going to see in 2033 has been front run. Of course, we're going to see, you know, like random altcoins, like go on crazy runs, right? Like what in whatever sectors, uh, but for the average coin, maybe the majority of the gains have been front run in this quarter. So like before we get to euphoric, right? Like I mentioned earlier, like if prices go higher, everyone's gonna be moving goalposts. Uh, so I just think it makes sense to start thinking of de-risking and or hedging plans. Because like I mentioned, if the going goes to 30K, everyone's gonna be calling for 40k, right? If you go to 40k, we're gonna be calling for 50k. At some point, you have to draw the line. Um, maybe that's too bearish. Maybe we're gonna see all-time highs, but I just like have a hard time believing that. So my strategy is Q1, focusing on capital gains. Uh, maybe not Q1, maybe like January and February, and then parts of March, focus on capital gains. Uh, and maybe Q2 to Q4, focused on like more yield and hedging strategies. Um, I know people know me as like some DeFi guy and like, you know, they expect like, farming content uh, but you know most farming products or you know most farming uh yeah like, yeah like most of the old farming probably not worth the risk uh, especially given the risk free rate so you know I i'm much more interested in you know finding good spots to bet on and also you know finding like good hedging strategies that also pay me a yield so let's talk about that uh hedging strategies and the domino speed to benchmark um <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of ridiculous, but uh, the Domino's Pizza ben benchmark is something I thought of um, yesterday as I was eating some pizza. Um, and sometimes, I mean, the, the, the benchmark says that sometimes it's best to conceptualize a token's valuation by comparing a market cap to a real world company that you know. Because crypto, very reflexive, it's very hard to like value these things uh, because it's, you know, it's all momentum, narrative. So, I mean, some tokens have fundamentals, but you know, depending on the app, like, you know, depending on the sector you're in, right? It's just like purely hype. Um, and one thing I like to look at is the Domino's pizza market cap, okay? So it's roughly 10 billion. Um, and I think we can all agree that Domino's pizza has uh, some value, okay? Um, as a college student, I used to, you know, I think there was like a, you know, two medium topping pizzas, $8 each, takeout only, you know, like I definitely did that like a couple times a month uh, in college, okay? Um, not anymore, right? Not anymore. I'm, I'm too old for Domino's. Uh, maybe that's a controversial statement, uh, but you know, $10 million, right? I think Domino's is value. Um, do I want exposure to the, the stock, right? Um, as you can see, the market, yeah, like, you know, it has a staking rate, right? If you buy Domino's pizza and you stake it on their website, you get a 1.63% APY. Real yield, right? It's paying real yield, right? People from Arbitrum love real yield, um, but you know, like I don't really care about dividend yield, right? Um, and this is also like a good idea to also think about for crypto. It's like, just because an asset is paying yield doesn't make it good. Um, and just because an asset is not paying yield doesn't make it bad, okay? So there's that. And uh, you know, one thing I, I mean, one of the uh, Taiki favorites, right? The channel favorite, uh, as in like a token to short has been Avalanche. Um, and Avalanche mark you up of roughly five, let's say six billion, right? With an FDV of 13 billion. Um, 
maybe FDV is a meme, but I think when you're valuing these projects, like a company, I think it's useful to use the FDV because, I mean, that's the total amount of tokens. And the question I ask everyone is, is Avalanche worth more than Domino's Pizza? I don't know. I don't know, right? It's like, I can't really eat Avalanche, right? It's like, it doesn't really, uh, you know, fill me up. Um, but if blockchain is the future of finance, then yeah, I mean, yeah, like, you know, why would a blockchain not be worth more than some random pizza joint? Um, but also, right, like in this environment, like, you know, whenever, like if Avalanche is worth more than Domino's Pizza, I just feel like, you know, maybe there's not that much upside left, okay? Um, <laughs> yeah, because if Avalanche 2x is from here, then uh, Avalanche is worth two Domino's Pizzas. Um, actually, maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe that's possible, right? Like, I mean, you know, you, you can have to uh, project future, I don't know, like onboarding, or like, you know, Web3, right, whatever. Um, because right now, like, you can take your one AVAX and you can buy, you know, two one-topping pizzas. You know, maybe that's real-world utility. Um, I mean, I remember a time when, like, you know, one AVAX got me, like, 16 pizzas, right? Uh, but now it only pays for two, okay? Like, that is what you call inflation, right? It's, 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 it's awful stuff. Uh, because, yeah, like, November 21st, 128, right? I think I did the math. Yeah, so, yeah, one, yeah, one AVAX could get you 16 one-topping pizzas from Domino's, right? Takeout only. Now it can only buy you two. Um, I think I think it's pretty reasonable actually. Uh, so like my, so 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 my concept is, if Avalanche right um, gets to the hedge zone, um, of course I don't mind shorting Avalanche now just as a hedge, not because like I want to make money on the short side, but you know if Avalanche goes down, chances are like my other altcoins are going down, so at least I get to protect some downside. So what I'm thinking is like if Avalanche enters like let's say the thirty to forty. $50 range, that is when I'm going to be shorting Avalanche. Um, and if you look at this chart, it might seem like that's a long way out. Um, but if you take it out of a log, it looks like this. Okay, like people are, you know, crazy excited about this. I mean, I think, you know, generally the markets can go much higher. Uh, I, I don't even know if AVX can go there, right? But I'm just saying that if it gets there, right, that's going to be prime short, right? At, at least for me. Uh, and I'm not going to short it outright. Um, if you've been following me, you know the strategy, but uh, you know, if we do enter the hedge zone, I would expect a bunch of coins to be up. I'd be euphoric, but you know, I have to force myself to take some profits. Uh, maybe it makes sense to be more heavier allocated to majors. Uh, you know, maybe stake some ETH and whatnot, uh, raise some cash. And like how I would hedge is to you know raise more cash, okay? Because I I need more. I, I don't have that much cash anymore. Um, deposit that on Aave, right? Use it as collateral. Borrow AVAX to buy GLP. So you know. If Avalanche goes down, then the value of my debt is lower than the GLP balance. So I would make money if the markets go down. But if Avalanche pumps, then I lose money on the hedge. But that's fine because I would expect my other altcoins to outperform AVAX. So that's kind of my outlook. It's like I still think we there's some juice left in the markets. Um, but you know, the higher price goes, the more cautious we should become. Uh, and of course, like it's, like nothing's guaranteed. Like nobody knows what's gonna happen. Uh, but this is just my market view in terms of you know being risk on right now, focus on capital gains. And as we approach the month of March, month of April, I'm gonna be looking to take things off and just like de-risk across the board. Um, and I'm not gonna go 100% cash, right? I don't think that makes any sense. Um, but I'll be more selective in types of uh, things I'm buying. GLP, there's always FUD around it. But hey, like I mentioned. The green line, which is the GLP supply, is going up and to the right, which means that more and more people are buying in the GLP. Um, and there's, I mean, yeah, there's always fun, but I'm not really phased by it. But D Y O R. And I guess, you know, thinking about the Domino Pizza benchmark, what about Lido, right? Like Lido, one of the strongest coins this year. Um, I still think it has more upside, to be honest. Um, I, I, I know that I was like kind of bearish Lido ETH um, like a month ago. Um, but as soon as like the SEC staking, like, or SEC suing Kraken, right? That news came out. Um, I'm like, oh yeah, like that's super bullish Lido. So, you know, I'm, I no longer believe that Lido is overextended relative to either. Um, and if you look at the FDV of Lido, it's 3.2 billion. And I guess like the one comp I found was for Victoria's Secret. Is Lido worth more than Victoria's Secret? Probably, right? Probably. <laughs> Basically the monopoly of the ETH staking services, probably worth more than a lingerie company. Um, but you know, you know, I'm I'm happy to be wrong, right? It's like, you know, maybe maybe this is a good buy at this point, right? Putting in higher lows. Yeah. So I showed this before, right? Um, Lido. This is the Lido ETH chart. Um, Lido ETH tends to like go up a lot and then just 
gets distributed, right? Uh, historically, and I thought maybe that it's going to happen here too. Um, but obviously, um, post Coinbase news, it's just super strong, uh, or the post the staking FUD news, uh, and I would still expect it has more upside. Um, and I really don't mind, like. Uh, you know, if I'm entering a coma and I want some DeFi exposure, like the Lido and DefXS definitely would be in my uh, part of my portfolio. So enough about that. Let's talk about, uh, or yeah, enough about lingerie and pizza. Let's talk about Blur. Um, I've been hyping up Blur uh, for the last couple of months, or maybe, maybe like since last month, and it did not disappoint. Uh, it was brilliant. I actually got some. Um, you know, like don't worry, IRS, I'm gonna pay my taxes. Um, and six thousand eight hundred fifty-one Blur. blur um, this was a pretty nice stimulus check, uh, not gonna lie. Um, I, I don't even think I bought that many N NFTs, but I still got like, you know, uh, this much. Uh, so, you know, like, you know, this, it pays to use these platforms and I'll talk about more NFT finance airdrop opportunities later in the video, but let's talk about Blur first. Um, oh yeah, so before I talk about that, um, I mentioned that, hey, like if Blur gives me money, um, I'm gonna give back to the ecosystem by buying some NFTs. So I sold Blur at like $1.20, right? Converted into Ether. So I got like 8,000 um, bucks. I took like $7,000 and I swept the floor of this. Um, <laughs> and, uh, it, it, and I kept like a thousand bucks. I'm like, okay, like cool. Um, so let, let's talk about Bado. Um, not gonna lie, um, not being honest, like I, this was probably a mistake, um, but hey, you know, you have to at least try. Um, so Bado is a decentralized autonomous artist governed by the people. Kind of sounds like fuzzy like you know like bs but you know like whatever uh but i actually think it's pretty interesting so basically the concept is there's a bado token and there are these pipes uh i, I don't know how to say that but you know they're, they're like these like pipes and if you hold those you can stake it and you can basically vote on the type of art that this ai artist is going to make um i'll provide some links in the description below uh for like how it actually works and of course like you know I don't really believe in like the AI hype right now, right in the year 2023. I think it's gonna be like a longer term thing. Um, but this only caught my attention because the very first artwork for this collection sold for 300K uh, and the second one sold for 400K and like the first five to 10 art pieces sold for six figures. Uh, and you know, this is uh, by the AI artist. Uh, and right now, the, or um, I think there's like a new season right now, but the last season uh, there was a like, this thing called Fragmentation and they sold for 10 to 20K um, on average. So how it works is every single week, um, the Bado artist has like an auction on the website called Super Rare, uh, and 85% of the revenues goes to token holders uh, and basically Bado stakers. So it just caught my attention because, you know, AI, crypto, NFT, right? It's just like a bunch of buzzwords with a bunch of hype. So I wanted some exposure to it. Um, I don't wanna buy like most of these tokens because it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like pumping, pump and dumpy. Uh, so I was like, okay, like, cool, I'll buy that pipe. Okay, <laughs> like I'll, I'll buy that pipe. Um, like, like I mentioned, it's probably a mistake. Yeah, so 85% of the auction proceeds goes to um, the DAO. Um, and 85% of like $10,000, not, not that much, right? Uh, but the fact that this artwork is actually selling for real money uh, just made, made, made it interesting. Uh, and my ENS for my NFT portfolio is farmertaiki.e. So if you want to see my NFT collection, you can uh, ch check that out. Uh, and you know, like I'm not really planning to sell these pipes. Um, I bought like 30 of them. Um, and yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Like I wish I had ETH instead of uh, these pipes, but you know, we'll, we'll live. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, I got a free stimulus check, so I'll sweep the floor. Um, it's funny because I, I swept 30 and uh, the floor went from like 0.12 to like 0.19, and now it's back to like 0.12. Um, and you know, these these pipes are liquid AF, so you know, I definitely cannot sell. Um, I think the Bado token is interesting too, but I was like, okay, like I'll buy these ERC 1155s, like, my, like why not? Um, yeah, like I, I, in hindsight, um, I think I just rather have <laughs> more ETH uh, or, or even USDC uh, but hey you know like the best way to understand what it's like to own a bunch of illiquid JPEGs is to own a bunch of illiquid JPEGs right like I, I own like 1% of the supply I can't even sell right it's like oh my god like you know these are so illiquid uh, but that's one of the problems that Blur is fixing okay um, I think you know I've been mentioning that uh, or, you know since I guess last year uh, one of the easiest bets I think to make for 2023 is OpenSea losing market share. And I mean, that's already happening um, as Blur um, basically flipped OpenSea uh, and OpenSea is, looks like they're panicking to be honest. Um, and on February 7th, I talked about this and the reason I've been bullish NFT marketplace tokens 
is because no one wants to buy NFTs, right? Like I literally swept the floor for those pipes and I feel bad. Um, but I, I want NFT exposure, but I don't want to buy NFTs. Um, I mean, I'm buying NFTs for the sake of buying NFTs so I can like experiment. Uh, but ideally, I want to buy liquid fungible ERC-20s. And I think the majority of people in crypto feel the same way. So my thesis, my argument was that if there is this, like a token, right, for an NFT marketplace that has any semblance of fundamental value, I think that they're going to require or they're going to have like a pretty high multiple and people are going to be willing to buy those tokens. And I think it can surprise a lot of people. And that's basically the thesis. Um, and Blur, right? I mean, it like went to like a dollar twenty. I mean, it's uh, let's, let's actually look at Blur. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it pumped a lot. Actually, it's like one of the few times I actually sold the top, uh, but I actually think it can go higher. Uh, but I mean, you know, this was like a pretty crazy, uh, I mean, yeah, like, you know, 8,000 bucks, like pretty, okay, but let's get back to the section. Um, so as expected, um, NFT activity has gone up a lot, uh, but I'm a little worried because my thesis around being bullish NFTs this year was for a bunch of these tokens to come out uh, to incentivize liquidity, incentivize volume, and hopefully that can lead to some NFT bull market. And of course, it's only been like, I mean, it hasn't even been two weeks since Blur dropped, so I think it's way too early to tell uh, whether I'm gonna be right or wrong. Um, but I wish there was like more organic activity because right now, yes, Blur volume is insane, um, but it's mostly wash trading, okay? It's mostly people farming the airdrop. People saw how much money like season one farmers got, and now that they're season two, everyone is going hand over heels. Um, but you know, it's not, I, I don't really see new people getting into NFTs. So for example, volume is up only, um, but the amount of unique users, not that great. Uh, so it's really just whales, like market making on blur and just like, you know, collecting these, these points, uh, which is fine because it's making NFTs more liquid. And, you know, I still think it's like a really good time to get into NFTs right now. Um, but ideally you want, like, I don't really care about, I mean, I'd, I'd rather see unique users go up than like this volume. I mean, ideally both go up, right? But yeah. And the amount of flippers on Blur, uh, these, I mean, some, like most of these screenshots are from Punk9059 on Twitter, uh, from the Proof Collective, shout outs to the Proof team. They make amazing content, uh, but you know, um, shout, shout out to him, but the amount of flippers on Blur, uh, basically all time highs and flippers are defined by people that uh, buy and sell uh, or, you know, buy an NFT and sell it the same day. Okay, so people flipping within 24 hours. Uh, and this is primarily because, you know, Blur is incentivizing buying, like, you know, listing and uh, setting bids. So whales are basically incentivized to maximize the amount of volume that they do um, and not lose too much money and hope that whatever Blur token that they get in the future is going to be worth more than, like, whatever they've lost. Totally reasonable. Um, a bunch of people in the NFT community I've talked to is kind of upset by this. Uh, I mean, I don't really think it's a big deal, uh, but I understand the frustration uh, just because like the majority of like <laughs> the supply for like these very liquid collections are controlled by, you know, uh, or like the majority of like the volume, right? Is like basically like, you know, just wash trading. So uh, in the case of uh, Pudgy Penguins, which I own, uh, you kind of see like the stair up, like staircase where it's like, you know, consistent volume, like up, down, flat, up, flat, up, oh my God. And then everyone just nukes it back to its original price. Uh, so there's like zero volatility in the NFT markets. Recently there was some um, because, you know, someone capitulated um, like Machi Big Brother. Uh, but you know, like it's basically back to just being flat. Like I said, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it actually gives more liquidity for people to, you know, enter this space. Um, but yeah, like, like I said, like there's, there's like no volatility, like things are not going up. Um, and for an NFT bull market to happen, right? Like there has to be more new users and I don't really see that yet. Um, yeah, as you can see, um, Blur token dropped, everyone's surprised and now everyone wants to farm it. Uh, I think for most people, um, it's not worth farming Blur because uh, farming Blur on season one, like I did, like was worth a lot, but like now I don't really care, okay? It's like the amount of people farming it or like the amount of volume or like the TVL, like basically five X from 30 million to like 150. And like season two is a smaller airdrop than season one. So, you know, can, can a retail participant make, like, you know, reasonably like make money farming this, paying 0.5% fees to like creators every single time they like sell? 
I don't really think so. Um, so I think there are better things to farm right now, uh, but everyone's doing this, or maybe not everyone, but like the whales are doing this. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely interesting. So I just want to talk about the blur dilemma, and this kind of relates to the token price of blur and why I'm a little bit worried. Uh, I'm not bearish. Like, I actually think that blur is reasonably priced. Um, I think the best uh, comp for blur is not like looks rare, but I think it's more DYDX. They're both very like low float, high FDV tokens infested by VCs and seed investors, but an amazing product, okay? Like, and yeah, like, I mean, uh, it's, it's very similar, right? It's like 300 million, 2.5 FDV, uh, 400 million, like $3 billion FDV. I think it's pretty similar. Um, and obviously, um, Blur makes no money right now, uh, but ideally in the future, governance can turn on the fee switch. So let's talk about the, the dilemma. So right, of course, only 12% of the Blur is circulating. Um, and I mean, cool, right? Thank you for the money. Um, and now they're season two, and they're gonna basically release 10% of the supply. So after season two, like basically when season two ends, the circulating supply of Blur is effectively gonna double, okay? So if the circulating supply doubles and the market cap remains the same, then price has to go down like 40, 50%. Right, so that's one issue, um, and the Blur team hasn't shared how long season two is gonna be. So the other dilemma is if season two is like six to nine months long, then you know, like, is it really worth farming it? Right, it's such a long time period, and paying 0.5 percent creator fees, like every time you like, I, I don't know if it's actually worth it. Uh, so maybe you know, if they announce that it's gonna be like six nine months then maybe people will leave. But also, if it's too short, if it's like, you know, if it ends in like sometime in April, then then the market will price in the fact that, okay, like in April, the circulating supply is gonna double and that's gonna be bearish for the price. Um, of course, maybe it's gonna bring in new buyers, maybe they're gonna like, you know, incorporate, I don't know, like more features, uh, you know, like more demand for the token. And, you know, ideally that happens, uh, but, you know, it's really, really hard for the Blur team to, you know, wiggle around this topic. Um, and I think what they're doing is smart. I think you know, if, if I were in their shoes, what I would do is to just not give a date. I would just say, hey, season two is gonna make you a bunch of money. And yeah, like, you know, it's gonna make everyone rich. Um, and then like, not just like, like don't say anything. <laughs> like, just literally don't say anything. And only say something once like you get a bunch of pushback. Um, there's also like this, you know, topic of uh, core contributors, launch partners and advisors, uh, their tokens vest uh, I mean, they, they invest over like four to five years, but the first cliff is four months. So, you know, it's like the circulating supply is going to only increase uh, over time. So, I don't know. I, I just feel like the token, um, I mean, I'm not bearish the token, um, but I, I, I literally don't know like what the risk reward of Blur is um, because FDV, three billion ish, right? Um, like two and a half billion. And I've heard recently that OpenSea's equity is trading at like, three to four billion dollars. I mean, don't quote me on that. Um, and equity is different from like token FDV. Um, like I'm not a huge fan of OpenSea, right? Like, I, I'd much, like I'd much rather like Blur do better than OpenSea, to be honest. Um, but is it reasonable for Blur to be worth more than OpenSea, right? Like OpenSea still has like significant network effects. Um, I don't really think they're gonna do a token. Um, I don't think uh, their legal framework or legal structure allows them to do that. Um, but you know, Mr. Uh, Tengian also uh, talked about this too, where right now, uh, if season two lasts for six months and distribute 300 million tokens, uh, that's gonna be like roughly a million dollars uh, worth of like value at today's prices. But also if, you know, if supply doubles, then maybe price should go down. So maybe it's like closer to like $600,000 worth of incentives a day. And the question people should ask is, is this sustainable? Um, I don't quite know. Um, it's really similar to like what happened with Luxware, where they incentivize people to buy and sell on a list. Um, they're doing a little bit better. Of course, Blur, much better. Like the, the, the founder um, is, is very, very sharp, very, very strong. Um, I do rather much bet on Blur than Luxware. Um, however, um, you know, I, I feel like the longer this takes, um, the successful Blur is really like very, very dependent on the token price. Um, and there's just like more supply coming into the markets. Uh, starting in June, um, or you know, like whenever season two ends, um, and you know, my gut feeling says it's not sustainable. Uh, but also, right, um, you're basically betting on a team to deliver. So, 
that's the dilemma. If the if season two is too short, it's bearish for price. If season two is too long, it might also be bearish for price. And if it's too long, then you know the investor token starts to unlock, and you know maybe the sentiment gets sour um, until then. So very interested to see. Um, and to be honest, I I really don't mind buying back Blur uh, later down the line, like maybe at a higher price. Um, and that's the thing with airdrops, right? It's like yeah, you can sell and then you can like buy back later. There's like no shame in selling, right? Like they give you free tokens, like take it. Okay, so let's finally talk about um, NFT Fi. Um, so like, I'm, I'm not sure like what people's sentiment is, but you know, like I, I mean, market has to become more efficient over time, right? It's like it's Econ 101. Like, did OpenSea really expect to charge 2.5 percent fees forever? Like, did creators really expect to like charge five to ten percent royalties forever? Like, I don't really think so. Um, these things are not enforceable on chain. So, I mean, if a project won't market share, then they're gonna you know go around that. Um, and I think that's good. I mean, I think OpenSea's like high fees is actually very destructive for the NFT ecosystem because there's a limited amount of NFT traders and collectors. So if these people have to pay two point five percent every single time, on top of royalties. And then at some point, like people are gonna like run out of money to buy NFTs with, um, and NFT supply is always going up. So I mean that's one of the reasons, like you know, bear markets, um, and hopefully like the strong NFT projects can actually you know uh, take over and recover. Um, but like I mentioned, right? It's like I think it's pretty much in inevitable for NFTs to become more financialized, and for DeFi, right? Like DeFi concepts um, for ERC twenties to translate to ERC seven twenty ones and ERC eleven fifty fives, and I think NFTs. Or NFT Fi is one cycle behind DeFi. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's get that. So yeah, I mean, like literally three days after Blur dropped the token, they literally like dropped their fees to zero, and also basically said, okay, like we're gonna you know lower creator fees just so we can remain competitive. And I think their writing's on the wall. I think royalties are gonna go down. Um, and I mean, it's not gonna go to zero, but it's you know, people are not gonna want to pay you know fees, right? Because people want to save on fees. Um, and you know this was interpreted by the market to be pretty panicky, uh, pretty bullish blur, um, because literally like, like what the hell like, OpenSea like took a stand like block listing competitors, create like protect creator royalties, but now they're like okay like you know we can't do it. Um, I would expect OpenSea to like start doing some layoffs to be honest. Uh, Magic Eden, right, which is like an OpenSea fork on Polygon and uh, Solana, they laid off like ten percent of the staff. Um, you know, and if OpenSea is gonna make no money, then you know, I'm sure that uh, you know they've overhired during the bull market or something. Uh, but who knows? Like, they raised a bunch of money, maybe not. But you know, I'm, like, am I really surprised by this? Like, no, right? Like, no one should be surprised by this. Um, and I still think that if you wanted to dabble in NFTs, this is like the best time to do so. Like, prices are down a lot. The price of Ether is down a lot. So you know, one ETH today is like less in dollar terms compared to like one ETH twelve months ago. Or wait, yeah, yeah, like one, one, eight, twelve months ago, um, and literally all these marketplaces, right, are paying you tokens to buy NFTs, right, list NFTs, bid NFTs. Um, I've only, I mean, I'm pretty new to the NFT scene, um, as in like you know being an active participant. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't even say that I'm that active, um, but I'm just trying to start um, create an NFT portfolio. Um, and yeah, I mean, if these marketplaces are gonna give me free tokens, then I'm basically, you know, being compensated for the risk I take. Uh, I think with all the NFTs I've purchased, I'm probably like break even. Um, but they're but they're also super illiquid, so like, I'm, I'm not I'm not even sure if that like says anything. I, actually, no, I'm I'm definitely up money because I flipped some little pudgies and rods. Uh, but you know, in any ways, like you know, might as well try things, right? Um, and you know, I think NFTs kind of turn people off, right? Um, but you know, as a DeFi channel, or as like a mostly DeFi channel, I just want to like leave you with this idea: um, if you just kind of apply DeFi concepts to NFTs, I think it's going to make a lot more sense. Because at the end of the day, it's like ERC twenties are like fungible tokens, uh, and NFTs are non fungible tokens. Okay, like I think it's inevitable for like you know the primitives built on DeFi to also be built for NFTs. It's going to take a longer time. It's going to be more inefficient because NFTs are so small. But I think it's inevitable. In 2021, I was farming DinoSwap on Polygon. And then in 2023, I'm airdrop farming 
all these various NFT finance, marketplace, ad creator, lending, AMM, all these tokens. Um, and I really encourage you to take a look at the sector. I'm not gonna lie, like there are very few projects that I think has, uh, you know, has like fundamental value. Uh, there's a, there's like 20 different lending protocols. There's like some yield aggregators, uh, but none of these have tokens. So I feel like for me, like I bought like a pudgy penguin, and I'm just gonna like use it as collateral, borrow against it uh, for like a week on that one platform, a week on another platform, and just kind of like just use all these things like all around, and hopefully in uh i don't know like 2024 or late 2023 they're gonna you know they're gonna thank me by giving me some governance rights um you know they're gonna share some governance rights to me right and you know hopefully sec does not protect me uh from these airdrops um so yeah i don't think using blur makes sense um, unless you like really like the platform um i'm actually started to like use magically which is another nft aggregator i'll talk about that later actually um but you know, it's really similar to like DeFi Summer in 2020 and like the all to all one rotations where uh, these projects are basically using their equity, right, in their token to basically incentivize people to use their platform. Is it sustainable? Maybe not. But, you know, if they do an airdrop, right, like you can just like sell it on day one or day two, week one, week two. Um, and chances are you might make a few hundred bucks, a few thousand, like a few thousand bucks. And if you're lucky, maybe like five, six figures. It's hard to imagine, but it's possible it's definitely possible um of course i don't really expect like the DeFi airdrops of 2020 like i know people that made like million dollars purely from airdrops only um, i think that era is over um and i think you know the airdrop farming in DeFi, that side of the market is very saturated like people have made complex bots to like you know like do a bunch of activities um and like civil attack these airdrops um, I think that NFT on, on the NFT side, there's like less sibling and like less botting. So I just think that there's more opportunities to, you know, be done there. And it's not like you have to buy like hundreds of NFTs. I think you can like just buy a few and just use it as collateral. Um, and hopefully, you know, they, they thank you with a governance token. Um, and also, right, um, if you go to Bendow, which is the biggest, I guess, NFT money market, um, it's kind of funny, like borrowers, ETH borrowers are paying 27% APR in Ether, but they're also being paid 30% in the BEND token. Does this thing have value? Probably not. Um, but hey, you know, if you're a whale, you can borrow against your NFT and like dump your BEND into Ether and like be paid to borrow. Does this remind you of something, right? It's really similar to the Matic days where I was being paid to borrow, right? I was being paid to borrow on Avalanche, right? Like on Aave, right? Remember those good times? It's pretty similar. Um, of course, right? Like, expect less upside. Expect um, you know less liquidity. Uh, but I think the concept is similar. Um, and if you want to think about forward-looking opportunities, like, I just like the the risk reward of like buying a few NFTs and using these platforms is like so good, right? Very little downside. Very uh, a lot of upside. And who knows, like maybe there's like a 3% chance you actually enjoy NFTs and damn, like, you know, you found a new hobby, right? Or you like lose your life savings on uh, j cartoon JPEGs. Um, so, you know, D-Y-O-R, I guess. Um, yeah, so let's talk about some airdrops. Uh, yeah, so magically, um, they said they're gonna do this airdrop February of 2023. So, I mean, I, I don't even know. I mean, I, I bought my pipes, right? The, the bottle pipes on here. So hopefully I get something. Um, Maybe it's too late if you're watching this video, uh, but who knows, like maybe they delayed it. Um, yeah, you know, it's like magically is actually doing like a pretty decent amount of volume. So like might as well try it, right? Like there's one, there's NFT perp. Uh, it's, it's gonna be on Arbitrum. I think you can go to Discord and request beta access. Uh, you can actually trade with real money um, and you can basically, you know, go long, board apes, go short, um, Pudgy Penguins. Uh, it's like you can like short, uh, short or long floor prices. Um, I'm not quite sure if their, you know, if their model is scalable uh, in terms of, you know, having this be a platform that trades like billions a day or something. Um, Cause there, there are like no chain link oracles for NFTs and you kind of have to uh, balance the longs and shorts by like funding rates. Um, I mean, it's, it's, they're tackling a big problem. Um, it's pretty exciting. So I, get, I encourage people to give, give it a look. Um, there's Abacus, um, they have some notable investors. They're trying to do appraisal for NFTs and allow people to borrow against um, like LP positions. Interesting, right? Like to be honest, I don't really understand what they're trying to do. Um, 
but hey, like I'll use the platform. Like why not, right? I'll, I'll use the platform. Um, like you'll be able to borrow against your LP or collection. Um, and there's gonna be like some way for collectors or like creators to make their, I don't, I don't know. Okay. I honestly do not know, right? But I'll, I'll use it. Um, there's ProTech simplification layer and the ecosystem partner for NFTs. I think they're also related to Abacus to some extent. Also doing something with creator owned liquidity. I don't know, okay, but I'll, I'll use it, I'll use it, right? I mean, this is the, okay, so um, if, if, you, if you haven't noticed, like I have like no idea like if any of these have value, or if any of these have use cases, but I'll use the platform because they don't have a token and they're probably gonna do an airdrop at some point in 2023. Uh, yeah, hopefully in 2023. There's this, there's Backed. I consider this to be the maker DAO of NFTs where you can use NFTs collateral, borrow this thing called uh, paper, paper, paper meme which is like pegged, soft pegged to the price of Ether. Um, I don't really understand what the point of this is, but I'll use it, I'll use it. Spice Finance, NFT yield, link, or aggregated NFT lending of liquidity. So, right, like there's like there's like 69 lending platforms for NFTs, but I'll use it, I'll use it. Um, Collection.xyz, um, they're also doing some NFT AMM thing. Uh, I think they're, they have some other features. They're on testnet. Might as well use the testnet. Yeah, like who knows? There's Caviar AMM, right? Um, another NFT AMM. I think they're actually on mainnet, um, but you know, the UI is very, you know, simplified and very new. But hey, I'll use it, right? I mean, by the way, like I haven't used most of these. I'm just, I just have plans to use them, okay? Because um, I don't have that many NFTs to like, you know, do, do all these at the same time. Manifold, very exciting. Um, so this is, the site that allows uh, creators to launch like open editions, which is kind of like, I mean, I talked about it before, but it's like, it's like very low cost NFTs, it's like uncapped supply. So uh, if I wanted to create some NFT collection, I can say, hey, like this NFT is worth $10 and in the next 24 hours, um, anyone can mint as much as they want. Okay, so that's kind of the concept. Um, and Manifold, right? Like they don't have a token, but if they do, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be worth a lot. Uh, so that's cool. Um, there's a platform called Zora, and for the next six days, um, you know, Coinbase launched or they uh, announced their intention to launch Base, which is their layer two. And uh, you know, you can mint this NFT. Like almost four hundred thousand people minted it. Um, you might as well mint it, right? It's like, I mean, I, I doubt that you'll get a token from this, but who knows? Like maybe if you mint this, you allow yourself for like a 1% chance for Coinbase to give you money. If not, you use Zora the platform and if they have a token, maybe you're eligible. Uh, OpenSea, right? Um, when they basically cut marketplace fees to zero, they said, hey, we're gonna explore ways to reward our most loyal users. And everyone was like, oh, token. I really doubt it. I think they're just saying that. So people <laughs> use their platform. Um, but also like Vasa, who is the founder of Gem. So OpenSea acquired Gem and Gem is an aggregator. Um, and maybe they're gonna do an airdrop, right? Like they said, don't wanna leak too much alpha, but maybe if you start using Gem V2, your wish might come true, eyeballs emoji. And then he deleted the tweet. So maybe the legal team was like, don't say that, right? Like we're gonna get sued. Uh, but who knows? Like, I mean, I really doubt that we're gonna do it again. Um, but may maybe, right? Like, like, so maybe use magically, maybe use blur, maybe use Gem, right? Like it aggregates the best prices anyway, so like might as well, uh, there's that. Um, and there's a YouTube channel called NFT Finance Podcast. They have less than 100 subscribers. This is criminal. Um, they have really good content. I really encourage you to listen to most of these. Okay, I mean, yeah, you can tell that uh, I watched some of these. So yeah, good channel. Um, I think th these people have good intentions. Okay, so last topic I wanna talk about is Taiki selling. So um, this is a nuanced topic, and I think most of you don't care, um, but I just wanna be consistent with um, what I've said in the past. Uh, you know, yeah, like, so, cause I, I don't like lying. Um, so in terms of, I mean, if you're new to the channel, maybe not, uh, basically like seven, eight months ago, like we were in the depths of the bear market, right? This was like post three AC, right? Um, basically like, I was like, okay, like I'm going to start talking about some coins. Um, but I don't want to like, you know, if I'm going to talk about a coin on my channel, um, given the size of my channel, like it, it looks kind of scummy, right? If I buy something make a video, sell it like a week later, right? Like well, who, who the hell does that? Um, so I was like, okay, like in order to align incentives between you and I, my, me and my audience, 
if I make a video on a coin, I'm not going to sell, right? Or if I do sell, I'm going to pre-announce that I will sell at some point. Uh, so I made that just because we're in a bear market and I didn't want to like, you know, move markets and stuff. Um, but, you know, as I mentioned at the very early stages of the video, um, you know, January, good month, February, also a good month or, you know, decent month. Um, and I just wanted to, I just want to start being cautious. Um, I also mentioned that I hold very little amounts of cash. Um, and I also kind of like pigeonholed myself into this position where I'm like, okay, like I bought, I bought a bunch of coins. I hold so many of these coins, right? But, but like, wait, I can't sell them. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm, I'm sure, yeah, like I said, like, I'm sure you don't care, but, um, I'm, I'm just like saying that, okay, like seven, seven, eight months ago, I said this, I haven't sold, I've only bought, but now I have to draw the line. Okay. Like I have to, uh, protect myself in case I get wrecked. Okay. Like I do not want to get wrecked. Uh, I've gotten wrecked enough times last year. Um, so these, yeah, so GMX FXS pseudo, right? Um, these three coins I've only like kept adding since this period, but you know, starting, let's say March 4th, um, I think I just came out that it's like five days from today, I think. I think, yeah, I, I think, but yeah, like this doesn't mean I'm selling, okay? I just, I'm just saying that, hey, like starting from March 4th, um, I can sell if I want to. Um, and re like realistically, like I've held GMX for over a year. I've held FXS through all the stablecoin FUD. I'm an active governance participant in pseudo. So like, I don't really see myself selling like, you know, anytime soon, to be honest. Um, but hey, like I said, I, I said, I'll do this. So I'm doing it. Uh, I'm not going to like dump it today or something, like, even though I'm not going to, um, I'll say like, okay, like five days. I think that's fairly reasonable um, because the problem with me right now it's like I own a bunch of these coins and there's like new tokens launching and I want to buy them but like I already hold like or I barely hold cash like I don't, I don't use my cash to buy these things so maybe I can rotate my altcoin profits into this but also like I can't sell or I said I'm not gonna sell so it's like I'm kind of handcuffed here um, so basically you know I'm not bearish these projects I'm not bearish these tokens um, but you know just let me rotate profits let me you know, sell into cash or either or something. Um, and also like if uh, it's, like, it's like some random like FUD hat like drops, um, that's really bad. Then, you know, I want the ability to like rebalance or something. So that's that, right? That's it. Um, nothing bad, I think. Um, just give me some optionality. And I think, you know, starting from today, like, um, I'm probably not going to do this anymore. <laughs> I'm probably not going to say things like, oh yeah, I'm not going to sell this. Um, because yeah, I mean, you know, holding the same coins for like seven, eight months. Um, I mean, I, I don't mind, right? I, I'm up on all these coins, but like, you know, it's like, I want more optionality and, uh, you know, like I'm not putting, uh, or like I'm doing a disservice to myself, like financially and, uh, I guess flexibility wise. So there's that, uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, I think that's about it. Yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed. Um, if you like the content, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment in the comment section below. And if you want more additional content, daily updates and whatnot, uh, check out the premium Discord. Also, link is in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. Have fun farming out there. Let's farm these NFT finance airdrops. Six months from now, I want to be able to say, hey, like, you know, who got these airdrops? Yeah, like, we all got these airdrops. Ha ha, ha ha, you know? So, cool. Um, yeah, bye bye.